Okay, so now we're getting into it. We're getting into what people call y equals mx plus b, which is the slope intercept form of a line. As soon as I'm done with this one, you might say, oh, he should have shown us that right away. I use the t-chart in the order that I use it so that you'll learn how to graph points by doing a lot of them with the t-chart, get familiar with the quadrants and all that. But you may prefer this, most people do, to the t-chart as soon as you get familiar with it. It's better to know what the t-chart tells you and then try this. But if you find this to be better than the t-chart, I'd encourage you to go ahead and use this. This does not correct itself, but it is much quicker. So what we're going to do is the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. That's one form of the equation of a line. So I should say can be, but I'm going to say is. And we're going to get this y equals x and plus. And now I said y equals mx plus b. I'm going to use colors a lot through this. y equals mx plus b because I want the m to be red. Red is sort of a stop sign, and when you stop graphing points because you hit the red, Green is your go, so I want B to actually be my starting point. And it's Y equals slope X plus intercept. A lot of people say, oh, don't call it intercept, because there's more to B than just, oh, B is the intercept. But the idea here is Y equals X plus, and M is going to be your slope, and B is going to be an important part of your intercept. I should put that in quotes, I'm not going to, that would be too intimidating to start with, but it's like this. If I truly want to say what B is, then I would have to call it Y equals slope X plus the Y coordinate of the point that is the Y intercept. And that sounds like too much to say, so I refer to it as the intercept because it has a lot to do with an intercept. The only important intercept is our Y intercept. And now I'll give you some information about M. M is the slope. The slope, as we've seen earlier, is to give us steepness, and the slope is going to give us the change in y over the change in x. And most importantly, one thing about it is it goes in front of the x. Now when you watch me draw y equals mx plus b, the y is always the same. So is the equal sign, so is the x, and for me, so is the plus sign. The slope is what sits in front of x. It can be a fraction, it can be negative, it can be a negative fraction. It can be an improper fraction, but it's going to be the slope. And it's best used as a fraction. Now that sounds unusual, but it's best to do its job if it comes to you as a fraction. Okay, and the third thing that you want to know is you want to use direction words. On the top, you'll either say up or you'll say down. You'll say one of those two for the direction you're doing because you have the change in y going either up or down, and then the change in x. A lot of people will say is across or over. Don't do that. You really need to give thought to whether you're going to the left or to the R-I-G-H-T not W-R-I-T-E, but to the left or to the right. And then we have this other thing in that we want to write when we're doing it out the words of the direction. So I'm going to say write the direction words. If you do that, then staring at you on the paper will be how you're going to move from point one to point two. And that's awesome. And the words can be up or down, one of those. And over at the bottom, don't say across, don't say over. A lot of people want to do that. You either have to say right, R-I-G-H-T, or left. The way I'm going to emphasize you do it, but not insist on it, is that you'll generally not move to the left on the bottom. You'll almost always go to the right. And I'm going to put this on the board and then erase it, because it's a little funky, but it may help you remember it. Right, like this. Right, like that direction, if that's what you're going, comma, R-I-G-H-T, question mark. And that's called right, right, right? Some people remember that. What that does is it just has you remember that if you're going to the right as a direction, you actually inscribe, thus write, the word R-I-G-H-T for that direction, 
True? And the answer is yes. You do right to the right. So you don't just leave it hanging there as a number. You don't have it as, you know, still a plus sign or a minus sign or a negative sign. You're going to actually be writing the word R-I-G-H-T or the word left when you're down there. So that's what slope is about. B is part of the y-intercept. The y-intercept is an ordered pair. The y-intercept always has this stuff, parenthesis, a zero, and a comma, then goes the number of what you have for your y-intercept, and finally it ends with another parenthesis. Again, we know 80%. It's an intercept. It's always the y-intercept. So that's awesome because now what we're going to do is we're going to write zero, parenthesis, the number we got for B, and then close it, and we have an ordered pair for graphing. And those are the really important things that we need to do and be aware of because we need to know slope is changing y over change in x to be written as a fraction with words. And we need to know that B is going to be a single number that goes after zero in the ordered pair that's going to represent the y-intercept. So when we get y equals mx plus b, now you might recognize why I've been having you put the x term in the middle. y is first, then the equal sign, followed by the mx term plus b, so you can find the stuff that we need to do. Now I'm going to show you what I've written up already. You can stop the video to write this down. But what I have here is the steps that we're going to use to get through any graphing using y equals mx plus b. Now because it's best as a fraction, when you get a fraction for your value for slope, that's actually good. It's better than getting an integer because people get the integers wrong sometimes. They do well, they mean well, but they don't treat them right. You can't treat the fraction wrong if you got a top and a bottom, then you know how to go up or down, you know how to go left or right. So fraction is awesome. So when you have a fractional slope, Instead of saying, oh man, I got to jump, I can't do 0, 1, 2, I hate the ones I can't do 0, 1, 2. This is perfect for that. Because what's at the bottom of the fraction is going to play a role in how the line slopes automatically. But if you have a number like 4, put 4 over 1 because it is best as a fraction. So you're going to go up to the positive 4, you're going to go up and then to the right 1. And we'll look at why that is as we look at different examples. But here's what you have to do. To do y equals mx plus b, notice it begins with y equals every single time before we go on to the next step. So if you don't have an isolated y, you need to isolate y. Go back and practice isolating y if you have any trouble with it, because otherwise it's the same old stuff. I can't do the ones that don't say y equals, and that's mildly useless. Okay. Then you set up y equals mx plus b, which basically means make sure that after the y and the equals, you have your x term followed by the number term. I've been emphasizing that for about a month now. Uh, okay, then determine your values of m and b. I actually write them to the side. I write m equals and I put a fraction there. If it's 2, I go 2 over 1. If it's 7 over 3, I write 7 over 3. It's good to go. And then for b, I write b equals and I put an arrow and I say, let's set that up as 0, comma, put my b in there. The b will be the number, not the letter b. You're not going to write the letter m anymore for this work and you're not going to write the letter b anymore. You're going to have numbers for those. Next, we're going to plot the y-intercept. 0, comma, whatever number you got, that's going to be your starting point. So from there, you're going to move along the slope. You don't go back to the origin, a common mistake. The only point you make from the origin is 0B. That anchors your line, and if you saw it in Connect Math, it allows you to spin around and have that be one of your points. It gives you infinitely many other options. We've got to nail down another point. Move along the slope. Starting at the y-intercept that you just made, that probably is not 0, 0, Move along the slope. Move vertically for the numerator, which is a word we've written with either up or down. And then move horizontally for the denominator, which is going to say either right or left. What I've been doing with all my fractions is putting any negative in the numerator all semester. That means that the top might be up, the top might be, might be down, but the bottom will always be positive and you'll always go to the right. You have an option to go to the left if there's any reason that a single negative shows up in the denominator, you can move to the left. Sometimes you run out of graph paper space, and you're forced to do the fraction in a different way with the negative on the bottom. It still works, and maybe even works better because it fits on the graph paper. But mostly, we're going to either go up or down on the top, and we're going to go to the right because the bottom will almost always be a positive number. We will write the word right. Remember, right, 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 right. You're going to write that out to the right. 
After you've made your two moves is when you're going to plot your second point. You do not make a dot after the vertical move. So you move across, you move up and down the way it says to do the vertical move on top. No dot yet. Move across according to what it says in the denominator of your fraction, which almost always go to the right, occasionally to the left in special situations. And that's when you make your, pot, your second spot, second point, and then you pass the line through your points. And you're done. And if you do it right, it's quick. If you do it wrong, it's quick. If you do it right, it feels right. If you do it wrong, it feels right. Okay, that's the problem. You're going to feel like you got it right. Maybe you didn't, but it's going to be quick. So, isolating Y is a big deal. Let's get some of these done. I'm going to lead us off with a couple that have Y already isolated. Y equals 2 thirds X plus 4. What am I seeing here? y equals mx plus b, y equals where the m is, I have two thirds. I've actually written it in red. x plus is standard in the equation of a line, and then b is four. Now what we have to keep in mind is that we always have certain things that are the same. y equals, always the same. m is something that depends on our particular line. You might almost want to call that m sub 1. x is the same as a letter, plus is the same as an operator. Then you want to have b, y equals mx plus b. Now if I put m sub 1, that might help you recognize that that's going to be a number for this line's slope, and that b is going to be the value for b on this line. They're not going to stick around as letters m and b all the way through to help me get the graph done. So what happens here is I now see that m is equal to 2 thirds. That's just me pulling it out of its position in the y equals mx plus b form of the equation of a line. Now what that means for me is I need to say up or down for positive 2. That's up 2. And this positive 3 is going to go to the right 3. And then I'm ready to use that when I go to do my graph. Both have action words telling me what direction to take it in. The other thing is b equals 4. That is not enough on its own to get me what I need. What I do need is to have that be part of an ordered pair where all that stuff is there. It's ordered pair where the 0 is the first coordinate, and in this particular line, b is 4. So now I'm going to get ready to graph this one. And you can go back, watch it slowly, whatever you need. This is a really good one to get a good look at. So I'm going to make sure, let's see, i got to get to 0, 4. So I go down to 0, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And 0, 4 has to be on line. I'm going to go up to 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I didn't put it down yet. So I'm thinking 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So i got 4 in every direction, and I have to do what 0, 4 requires. 0, 4, nothing across. Always this will lead with nothing across. And I have to go to positive 4 on this one. So I go... Up, one, two, three, four, and I wind up somewhere on the y-axis. It's called the y-intercept because it's a point on the y-axis that this line passes through. From that point, step back, step back in. From that point, one more time, from that point, not back at the origin, where I am. I'm going to go up two, then I'm going to go right three. So I'm going to go up two. And then I'm going to go write 1, 2, 3. Now this is not essential, but I'm going to let you know what point that went to. When I went from 0, 4, I went up 2 to 0, 6. I'd say that only once, and I'm going to end with that there. But now we're here, and we don't make our dot yet because we now have to move to the right 3. We're at 0, 6, we go 1, 2, 3, and we wound up at this point 3, 6. And that's a good point for our line. So I started here where I had already put my green dot as my y-intercept, and I decided this is going up to the up two and right three before it makes another point on my line. And that's all I need to create what I'm graphing. Now the reason that I wanted to point out the three six, because you normally just need to place it there and you don't need the coordinates, is let's look at this. Just look at the first two. We're going to go jumping by 3, 
And if I put a zero in there, I get two times zero is zero. Divide by three, still zero plus four, I get zero four. Okay, that's gonna be the first point that you get. That was zero four. Now I'm switching to red. I know I used the blue for the second one in the past, but if we jump by three, I put in a three, two times three is six, divide by three is two, two plus four gets me six. See, what happens is this automatically gets you the first two points of zero jump, double jump, without finding the second point, just putting you where it's going to take you, and then you're good to go. So I'm do another one. Y equals negative one half X plus three. Y equals negative one half X plus three. Well, what we should see is it already has the isolated y, and y equals slope x plus intercept, so I write y equals x plus with spaces, where the slope is going to be negative 1 over 2. That's my negative 1 half. The negative is on the 1 up top, clearly, but it's still 1 half, and it's got a negative value. That's perfect for what I'm going to need to do with it. Plus 3. y equals slope x plus intercept. y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. So m is negative 1 half. And that means something to me, because I've got the negative on top, right? I've got negative 1 over 2. Negative 1, up or down? Down 1. It's only on the 1, so that one is down. Positive 2 on the bottom is going to be right 2. Some people try to leave the negative in front, and then they don't know if it's on the 1 or the 2 or both, and all kinds of bad things can come of that. Putting it on the top, up or down? Okay, down. And then write 2. So I'm going to use my slope. B equals 3. It's not useful yet. But I have 0, comma 3. All right. Let's get this one graphed. That's a 0, 3. So I go up 3, 1, 2, 3. 0, 3 is above the origin, positive 3. So I'll go up above the origin and get my 0, 3. That's my value for B. And that's my anchor point. That's where I'm going to start making this. From there, I'm going to do these two things. From that spot, I'm going to go down 1. I'm going from 0, 3 to 0, 2. Don't need to know it, but it does happen. Going to the right 2. That point winds up being, it went from zero down, from 3 down to 2 for the Y, and from 0 up to 2 that's going to be the point 2, 2. I don't need to know it, but it is. If I put a 0 in there, I get y equals 0 plus 3, I get 0, 3. If I put a 2 in there, because the jumper tells me to, I get negative 1 plus 3, I get 2, and I get 2, 2. I don't ever need to find that point or know its coordinates. I have to get the right spot and get this one. It's above the origin going downhill and it's missing quadrant three. A lot of the stuff is gone, I need more board space. But anyway, y equals 3x minus 5. I told you that slope is best as a fraction. So let's get a look at this thing, y equals x plus. I also think plus is an important feature of what we've got here. Why is that? Well, y equals mx plus b, I see a 3, and then I have plus. And then behind it, I still need the dash and the 5. And now I know that b is negative 5. I don't have to say, well, b is sometimes positive, sometimes it's minus and plus and whatever. It's always plus, sometimes a negative number. And now you know that b is a 5 with a dash, negative 5, instead of saying, oh, b looks like a 5. It just happens to be behind a minus. There is no minus. b is negative 5. So now when we get to it, we'll be able to say that m equals 3 which is 3 over 1, which now needs some words for direction. Because it's positive 3, I'm going to go up 3, and then I'm going to go to the right 1. You need that 1. Okay, You need that 1. If you say, I like 3 better than I like 3 over 1, you're going to get in trouble when you go to graph it, because you're not going to have a position that tells you what to do for going across. You need the 1 for going across, because we're going to go to the right 1. We're not just going to go up 3 and say, I guess that's it. 
and now b is equal to clearly negative 5. And you'll notice every time I use b, I do the same thing after this. No matter what number I just wrote, I got an arrow. I got parentheses, 0, comma, parentheses. And now the specifics of negative 5 go in for me here. So let me graph that one. First thing I got to do is graph 0, negative 5. So I'm going to have my graph paper set up to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I will go to 0, negative 5. Then I'm going to go up 3 as well as right 1. I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, and to the right 1. Not just up 3 and call it quits, up 3 and to the right 1. That lands me at 1, negative 2. That would be the second point that we would have gotten. I'm not worried about that. I'm here to graph the line, which goes starting below the origin at 0, negative 5. Going uphill from left to right, it's going to miss quadrant 2. That's done. Told you it was a little quicker. Two x minus three y equals nine. Nine divided by two gets me a decimal, so I don't want to do this with intercepts. You can see that the five divided by one was okay, but five divided by three. Another reason I don't want to do that one with intercepts. But here we are. I'm supposed to isolate y. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to subtract the two x. I'm going to write again two x plus negative three y equals nine. Subtract two x off each side, or add negative 2x, that's gone. Negative 3y equals negative 2x plus a 9 to divide by negative 3, right? If you have any trouble getting with this to where we've got to be, then it's about isolating y, and you need to go back and work on isolating y. Whether you're going to use the three-point method or slope-intercept, you've got to isolate y. The opposite of negative is positive, 2 thirds doesn't reduce for x, plus single negative for that 9 over 3 is 3. I could go 0, 3, 6, but what I'm actually going to do here is get m and b. What I have here is y equals x plus. In the slot where I have my slope, 2 thirds appears, I now make it red, so you can see that's my slope. After the plus sign, I have negative 3. Therefore, I'm going to go up here and say that m equals 2 over 3. And that needs me to, it is a fraction already, but it needs some words for direction. Up or down, positive is up. Left or right, positive is to the right. Up to right 3, that's what I'm going to use. b is equal to the number of negative 3. But the y-intercept needs all five of these things, parentheses, zero, comma, and a closing parenthesis. And the only thing special about this y-intercept is it's using negative three. So I'm going to go write that one, which is going to be starting at zero, negative three. So I go down one, two, three from the origin. That's negative three, so I'm going downward. And that is my starting point from where I'm going to go up to and write one, two, three. Three, and I'm going to get that point. It winds up being 3, negative 1. You can see that 3 would have been the next point I would have gotten with the jumper. And I get this one. Same kind of sketch as the last one. This goes below the origin, going uphill, and misses again, quadrant 2. 5x plus 6y equals 12. couple questions people bring up. How do I know I'm going to have a good intercept? Don't worry about it until you get there. If you have a fraction, you deal with it, and hopefully you don't have to graph it if it has an ugly fraction in it. But what's going on here is 12 divided by 5 says don't use both intercepts. So let's go and isolate the y and hope for the best that when we get our value for b, that it comes out as an integer. If it doesn't, then it's something that we're going to have to graph with points that are not starting with 0, and we'll go to the t-chart again. But we might start with 1 or 2 or something like that. So 5x plus 6y equals 12. We'll subtract the 5x. We're getting y alone. We're not saying, today I feel like getting x alone. It's just one of those days. No, you have to get y alone. Divide each one by 6. And y equals negative 5 over 6 unchanged in front of x plus 12 over 6. Okay, good. That's a 2. So I'm going to get 2 when I get to b. M equal to negative 5 over a positive 6. That's why I say down for the 5 
I don't say across, I say right for the six. And B is equal to two. Once I write that in green, that's what B needs me to do. But then in using B, I always have this zero first. So that's zero two. I'm ready to graph this thing. Zero two is above the origin by two notches. That is my green opening, right? Green for go. Y intercept point, always on the Y axis. It's a value of Y when x is zero, that'll place it on the axis every time. Downward five and then right six, down. One, two to zero, three, four, five. I actually wind up three below the origin in this case before I even go right six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I take my first two steps to get to the origin and then three more to do all five. And I wind up here. Now what point was that? It's six to the right of the origin. So that's six and it's three below. It's six, negative three. You can, but you don't have to look at this thing I'm about to say. But this is true. It's above the origin, going downhill, missing quadrant three. If I were to put in jumpers, I would use six next. That's why I have six for my next x coordinate. And if I do negative 30 divided by six, I get negative five plus two, subtract and get a three, which is strong on the negative, and you wind up at six, negative three. So it finds the second point of the jump method every time without finding the exact point. Again, now this time, my magic produced the three more problems that I'd like to do to close out this video. We're still isolating Y, finding M and B to do the slope and the intercept setups to plot the Y intercept. You actually plot the Y intercept first, let me point out. They call it slope intercept because when you're reading from right to left, it's Y equals slope X plus intercept. But when you put it to work, the first thing you use is the intercept and the second thing you use is the slope. So what I've got here is I'm going to take my negative 7x plus 8y equals negative 24. Jump back. 24 doesn't divide evenly by 7, so let's continue. Let's add 7x to both sides. 8y equals 7x plus negative 24. Each one is going to be divided by 8, perfectly creating for us a y equals. 7 over 8 doesn't reduce. And we've got negative 3 there. So what we've got in y equals mx plus b format, we have y equals something x plus something. It's y equals slope, 7 eighths for the slope, plus dash 3, which makes it negative 3. So now if I'm going to go and see what I'm going to say about m, m equals, yes, 7 over 8. I'm glad it's a fraction. But it's going to be up 7 because it's positive, and it's going to be right 8 because unless it was negative, it's always going to go to the right. If the bottom was negative, we'd say go to the left, but we haven't encountered much of that. B equals negative 3. That's what B equals. That's not what the intercept equals. The intercept has to be a point. This y-intercept has to have 0 as its first coordinate in this specific negative 3 right here. So... We are down here at 0, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. Let me go ahead and we plot. And now we have to go up 7 as well as right 8. So up 1, 2, 3 to 0, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'm up at positive 4 for my new y. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I went up 7 and to the right 8. And that's what I got. That wound me up at 8, 4. But what we need to know is that wound me up there. Below the origin, going uphill from left to right, missing quadrant three. Next up, we have 2x minus 3y equals 6. We have an option here. 6 divides by 2, 6 divides by 3. We could do that with intercepts, and it would work. You can try that and see if you get the same graph if that interests you. Let's say we're insisting on working on isolating y and getting y equals mx plus b. Then we'd have to take our 2x plus negative 3y equals 6. We're going to subtract the 2x, yeah, no 4, come on, negative 3y equals, we got the negative 2x plus the 6, divide each term where it sits by not just 3, but by negative 3. So that when we come out of here, we're going to get y equals, right, opposite of negative, 3 over 3 is 1, we got y, 
the opposite of negative gets me a positive two thirds for x's coefficient. Plus, a uh, single negative gets me a negative with six over three getting me two. So now I'm seeing this as y equals slope x plus intercept. When I said slope, I wrote nothing but space because the slope is gonna be consumed by the number two over three, positive. And the value for b, part of the y-intercept is negative two. I was on the other part of the y-intercept, m equals two over three. So I'm gonna write m equals two over three, and I'm glad it's a fraction. If it's not a fraction, I'd put it over one, but it's a fraction. I don't have words yet to tell me that positive two is gonna go up two, and positive three is gonna go right three. Pretty good. So now I'm gonna go with b equals the number that follows my plus sign. That's a negative two, and that's b. That's not the y-intercept. It'll sure take me there if I know how to use it. But the y-intercept always begins with zero coordinate and is followed by my specific value of b for this line. It says let's start at zero, negative two. So we will. Start at zero, negative two. Remember, we don't go back to the origin if you're having trouble with that. We don't go back to the origin. We start on zero, negative two, anchors our line, and now we go up two and right three, just like that says, up two and right one, two, three, oh, look at that. Also on an axis, it wound up at the point three, zero. You can go back to our original. Remember I had you not hack up the original? See, three, zero works, it always should, right? This is zero, negative two. So if I put in zero, that's gone, Negative three times negative two gets me six. Now the other one says if I put in a three for x with zero for y, three here, two times three is six, minus zero, six minus zero is six. They both work, they got the same points as the intercepts would have gotten us, but they got it in this way. They won't always do that, but they can at times. Don't go looking for miracles, just take what you can get when it helps you. 20 divided by three doesn't work out evenly, so that would be bad for intercepts, I'm getting at it with negative 3x plus 4y equals 20. I need to get rid of the negative 3x from this side. I need 4y by itself, plus 3x plus 3x. That's gone and I have 4y still here, but I have a 3x plus a 20. I don't want 4y, so I divide each of the three terms that I have, both sides of the equation, by four. Now y equals, three over four doesn't reduce, in front of x. 20 divided by four is five. So I've got y equals slope x plus intercept, leaving space for slope. I got three over four. Plus for the y-intercept, I get some information when the five shows up for b. M equals three over four. That needs some directional words. Positive three is up three, and then to the right, four. Again, fight the urge to just put a four, to write the word across four, or to write the word over four. It's R-I-G-H-T, so it should go to the right. Left and right are both across. Left and right are both going over. Right is right. B equals five. And because B is five, the y-intercept is completed with a five for its second coordinate. Zero, five is the whole thing. So let's see what we got here. We've got 0, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we've got that point, 0, 5. And now we gotta go up further thanks to going up by three. One, two, three more, and to the right four. One, two, three, four, and I got that one. So it went from being up five, three more up to eight, and now at four, eight, and if I put four in there, I'll get 12 over four or three plus five, and it gets me eight. So it does work as the second point that the double jump method would get me, but I don't ever have to find it. I don't have to find the coordinates of it. Just go right ahead and graph that one. In summary, this one. It's above the origin, and it goes uphill from left to right. And it misses quadrant four, but here's the story. If I had tried to let x equal zero and then let y equal zero, I would have let y equal zero and I'd have to do 20 divided by negative three. That would get me negative 20 over three, negative six and what? Two thirds. And that's where this would show up so it'd be hard to graph. So I'm glad I know how to isolate y. That's where you are with this one.